Hello ladies and gents, this is another video brought to you by Ants Hood and today's video is going to be my Acroma Mermix Oxyspinosis Springtime Boom and these ants were gifted by Ants Davy, so thank you matey. And did you see that? I said the name on the first take and I probably got it almost right. I tell you what, this Latin stuff, I'm starting to get the hang of it now. Well, until my next video and I try and pronounce a name that I won't be able to read. So why did I call this video Springtime Boom? Well, mainly because I couldn't think of another name for it, but regardless of that, it is springtime and now there's gonna be a large variety of different types of leaves and stuff that we can feed our ants. Now, I don't know about you other leaf cutter owners out there, but I have been really restricted over winter about what I can give them. There is drive throw petal, rose petals you can give them, but they don't have the carbohydrates that the ants need. So you really need some fresh leaves. And I've just mainly been using this Japanese privet which is great, but it's no variety at all. And I've tried other stuff, other privets and things, but generally speaking, the results have been slow grow. Now you guys know I like to do this. I show a bit of footage from my last video so you guys can get an idea how they've grown. Now my last video was about a month ago. And if you haven't checked out the playlist for my leaf cutters, I'll put a link in the top right corner now so you guys can check it out. But let's move on to how they're getting on right now. As you can see, the fungus garden has grown quite a fair bit and to be truthful, most of that growing has been done since spring and I've had some other options to give them bit, uh, different bits and bobs because leaf cutters do get bored of the same, well, bored's not the right word, but they do get lose interest in the same kind of leaves constantly. But in winter, we have no choice and it is what it is. As you can see, this is quite worth noting as well. Look how pale the fungus garden is as well, how white it is. Now that's obviously the fungus and it's got good growth. There's no issues with it. But what I will do a bit later is show you what it looks like after they're fed. And what I'm currently feeding them, mixed with the Japanese privet, is this blossom tree. Now, apparently it's a variation of the plum family, but obviously it doesn't produce very big plums or anything like that you can eat. But it's a variation of it. Now, the reason why I'm feeding this at the moment is because, one, it's a rare treat for them it's coming out of spring. And two, this doesn't last very long. So it's a good opportunity to get them loads of uh, flower leaves in and stuff like that in an early stage. And to tell you the truth, they absolutely love it. So this is a fungus at the moment, as you can clearly see, it's nice and white, which has got lots of fungus growth, which is really great. Now that browny yellow stuff, that is old fungus. Now they tend to leave that alone when it's supporting the main fungus garden like it currently is. But if I was to lay this on the side, which I may do because it's getting near the top, they'll actually break that down and move it into the trash pile and just leave the main living fungus. And I've seen them do that a couple of times. It doesn't take them long to take it apart either. Now, apparently the fungus doesn't support the adults. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about that one because I, I know that the fungus produces fruits and I would imagine they're sweet. If it's sweet in there, there'll be adults be feeding off that as well. But hey, what do I know? But it does surprise me how the size of the fungus and how many workers it supports. I'll probably say I've got around um, 300 plus workers at the moment. What's also really interesting for me is how quickly the fungus establishes. Now you can see it's pretty much all over the fungus garden as it were, or, or the substrate that they've put there for them. The substrate's not the right word, the mulch leaves they've put there for them. So what they do is they move clumps of the fungus over to where they've got new um, leaves mulched up for them and then it quickly establishes like you can see here, it spreads fairly quickly. Now these only got fed two, two days ago, I think it was. As you can see, there's still some leaves that are processing there. But oh, there's some of those fruit just there is what I was talking about, the fruits, that little red thing just there. That is the fruit I was talking about. Now, some people say that can contain um, sweet stuff for them because it's a fruit. Others say it's where they've, the fungus is eating something it doesn't like and it produce, uh, produces these little balls of, um, well, call them fruits. Myself, I think it's the former. I think it's more sweet stuff for them to harvest if they want. Now, the reason I say that is because if they'd actually taken something from the leaves that they didn't like, then I'd imagine it would be all over this fungus garden because when I feed them a particular something, they generally get a lot of it. So it will be plastered all over the fungus garden and I'll show you what I mean a bit later on when I've got some footage after they're fed. Now, as you can see here, this is what I was talking about a bit earlier about how the fungus is all on the inside as well where all the brood are. And there's some great pictures of the brood here. And believe it or not, you, you do generally see the brood like that, but this, I think there's a lot of brood in there, to be honest, and you can't see it because it's deep down in the fungus where the queen generally trills out. Since the fungus got to a decent size, I've only seen the queen once, and that was in a lucky shot when I was doing some video in, and she popped her face out for all of three minutes and then popped back in again. So you don't see the queen a lot, which isn't a great shame, to be fair, um, because at least she's happy. There's plenty of brood there. Um, and all that malarkey. Now I have laid this fungus down on its side, but I just keep building up against the wall. So at the moment I'm leaving it as is, unless it gets too near the top. 
So currently the new pod is being used to house the fungus because it was nice and clean there. And I'm currently using the old pod, this one, for the trash and the feeding. Now, when I get another pod, which I do want to get soon, I want to make this pod the trash pod. It is a pain in the bum because you see that hydration tube up the left. Now, they keep climbing up on that and getting out. And I spend a lot of this time in this video just dropping them back in or when I'm cleaning them out, popping them back in because they're crawling around the top and getting everywhere. The new pods don't have that, so you can actually put a PTFE barrier around it where it won't be an issue. And normally with a high humidity area, you wouldn't use PTFE, 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 sorry, get my words out, because it doesn't work well in high hydration, but that's because of the humidity that forms. Because I've got these at room temperature, no no condensation forms so if no condensation forms ptfe still pt whatever it is still works really well and it has reduced the numbers that can get out but they've know that they can climb up that tube and get out that way and annoy me to sin but not only that this already has the trash in it so they know full well that this is a trash pod so even if i move the configuration around a little bit they will find the trash again. Let's just clean that bit of PTFE off. They will clear. They um, will find the trash area again and they'll just move all the trash there. So you start, this was my foundation one where I had everything in it. I was feeding them, the trash was there, the fungus was there. Now I moved on to a bigger, a new pod, put the fungus in there where it's nice and clean and sterile. And they're still pretty much keeping that nice and clean. And then feed with this one, put the trash in this one. And now when I move on, I'm gonna put this as the trash and have another feeding pod. So that's nice and clean in there as well. Now I will add humidity to that uh, pod as well because the humidity in the pods actually stops the leaves and petals from wilting. Now, if it was a dry environment, leaves start to wilt after an hour or two anyway, and after a day, you have to take them out. But if there's still high humidity in that pod, then the leaves don't wilt and you can leave it in there for a couple of days without them worrying about it or about worrying about getting more leaves for them. And it also gives the uh, ants plenty of time to get settled and start cutting those leaves too. With all this food that I've put in there now, it only took them like 16 hours to completely destroy this. And I wish I took a time lapse of this, but I didn't. What I actually did was take a time lapse of the fungus of them collecting and putting it on that. And I'll show you that now because I do love a time lapse. Speaking, I'd love to have a camera to do this properly, but unfortunately I don't. So it's only on my phone and the battery runs out. But this was done over a course of a couple of hours and then you can see them really intensify once they start cutting and they're getting covered with the petals. They do absolutely love fresh petals. And I think when it goes forward, my uh, roses start to flower. I'm definitely gonna harvest them as they start to wilt and stick them in here because I think these guys would love fresh rose petals. But as you can see, they move it around and they tend to take it into the tunnels first and start mulching it down there. And then they'll carry that around and dump it all over the uh, fungus where they feel like it needs to grow. I absolutely love watching them in real time. They're, they're probably the most watched species I've got next to my Solenopsis. And any reason the Solenopsis get as much uh, view time as they do when I come to being in my ant cave, it's great to make sure they're not escaping because they are prolific escapers. But these guys are just so interesting. Everything they do, where it's tending the fungus, if it's cutting, if it's moving rubbish around, everything they do is just amazing. And the longer you watch the fungus, the more you see. So this is my fungus before I fed them. As you can see, it's nice and white, plenty of fungus everywhere. It looks really good and healthy. Now, after the fed, this is them now. Look how dark it is. Now, this isn't a bad thing. This is just them building on top of the fungus garden and it is completely normal and natural. All that black stuff is literally just a mulch down, or should I say dark stuff, it's not necessarily black. It's just mulched down uh, leaf matter and the petals into mixed with their saliva and, and stuff and mulched down so it can be used for the fungus garden for the fungus to establish on top of that. And as always, I'll get the macro lens out so you can see exactly what I mean. Because in this video I'm about to show you, I'll point it out, but you'll see what I mean about them mulching it down into little balls. Now from that picture, it looked pretty dark and barren, but when you zoom in with the macro lens, you can clearly see there's still fungus all over it. Now this uh, macro shot was taken uh, only a couple of minutes before the photo was, so literally it is current. But you can see all the stuff where they've mulched it down and built on top of it with those little balls. They're literally, this fungus is a collection of little balls and that is what I'm talking about just there in the middle of the screen. That is where they've mulched down leaves and put it into a little ball and attached it to the fungus garden. There's another one so the fungus can then grow on top of it because all that this leaf is is just an awesome, ideal compost garden for the fungus to grow. 
And there's, if once you get your eye in, you can see there's little bits of mulch stuff up everywhere. So that is how they build this fungus garden. It's nothing but balls built on top of each other over and over again and built in a specific shape. So it's actually quite strong. It's very flexible and very weird to touch, like I said in my last video, but it's very strong. And when I say strong, I mean in its structure, because if I stand on it, it's still gonna break and squish. But you know what I mean? This is a photo of those little balls. You can see there's three balls there, very fresh, very wet, still very moist, and they're different colors. So I imagine one's a leaf and maybe one's a petal kind of thing. That's why they're just changing color. Now, when they build this up, they literally get clumps of fungus and then I'll move it to around the area if there's a significantly large amount of it and essentially seed the area of fungus so the fungus can grow fairly rapidly. Now, if you look at this picture, you can see there's fresh balls all over the place and yet the fungus is already established, uh, pretty established within this area as well. So it's a very quick process for the fungus to, to, to establish itself in this new area and grow fairly rapidly. And like I said before, 16 hours later, this is all of left of that pod that was full of leaves and petals. I'm gonna keep this in for at least to the end of today and see how much more they process, but they're pretty, once they get their mind to it, they can be pretty quick at processing stuff, especially if it's a leaf or a food that they really like. As I said in previous videos, a lot of people like myself had leaf cutters as their dream species to get, but were always scared and intimidated because of them being difficult to look after. Now, the reason why I think that is, is because a lot of people did DIY setups and they still do to be fair. Some did really well, some not so well and they got the reputation of being notoriously difficult to, to, to look after as it were. But now that there's a number of retailers that have bought out specialist setups for leaf cutters, I can safely say these guys are easy to look after. The setups look after the humidity for me so I know it's right, so all I need to do is make sure the temperature's right. Now, it's not too difficult in most setups because you can put a temperature reader in there so it shuts off the heat when it gets to a certain heat and you can keep it where it is. Myself, I just heat the ambient temperature in my room up to the right temperature so I don't get condensation so I can do decent filming footage for you guys. But other than that, other than supplying leaves, that's the only thing I need to worry about. And to tell you the truth, it's not really a worry for me at all. I know full well they're likely to boom over spring and summer especially and going into autumn because there will be a wide variety of uh, different leaves and stuff I can get for them and leaf cutters do actually like variety. So I do suspect or expect in winter I might get a die off because I'll only go probably go back to privet because that's an evergreen plant that they do eat or do process should I say into, for, for the fungus and it's always readily available. If it's not in the parks and stuff like that, as you're walking past someone's front garden, just do a stealthy nick a few leaves, that's what I generally do. Hey, disclaimer, not that I'm saying you should rob other people's plants and stuff like that, because there's plenty in parks, but needs must. And I did try over winter a large variety of different evergreen plants, but generally speaking, they weren't interested in it unless it was privet. So with that in mind, I suspect that my fungus will stop growing or won't grow as quickly and I will get a die off come next winter. But also if you're looking at the larger grown species such as the atters, that they grow to up to eight million strong, that regular process will probably keep your, your Conley a manageable size. So I don't know about you guys, I could not manage a Conley of ants this big that's over eight million in size. That would just be crazy. I can barely keep up my Solenopsis and they're teeny tiny compared to these. One thing that is probably putting people off as well as the cost. Now they aren't cheap and the setups aren't cheap. The ants, I got mine for Ants Davy. Now, lucky for me, he gifted me to them. So I will put a link in the description below. He has got these still in stock at about 150 pounds. So they're not cheap at all. And the setups, this for this pod, I think, if memory serves, retails at about 60, uh, 70 to 80 pounds. And the same with the, well, not this pod, because it's a prototype, but the other pod retails about 60, 70, uh, 70 to 80 pounds. And then you have to buy your pods on top of that. I know ants, Antboy UK does a complete three pod setup, which is around 170 odd pounds. So like I said, it isn't cheap. The initial cost is quite high, but maintaining them and feeding them, all you really need to do is give them leaves that you find around uh, parks and stuff like that. So they're not difficult to, or cost a lot of money to feed after that. I mean, currently I'm spending around 20 to 30 pounds a month on cockroaches to feed all my other colonies. So give you an idea of costs. It won't take long for these guys really to be worthwhile in the long-term costs of how much everything is. It's a point of noting as well that I'm not actually affiliated with um, Tom in Ants Davy or with Kushi because I'm using his setups because I'm not. I just 
Tom gave me them for free, so that's where I got these from. So fair play to him, as I always point out in my videos, they were gifted to me. And the Rakushi setups, I was lucky enough to pro test the prototypes. So I had it set up for me fairly, fairly luckily. It all fell together at the right time, so I had it set up for me. But I would recommend, because they're the only ones I've tried so far, is the Makushi setups because they clearly do really well with mine. And I know from Antolifer and other people that have got um, these setups, they've equally got the same results. And Rob J as well, I think he's got the setup as well, and I think he's doing okay too. So definitely worth the spot setup. Going forward, I am looking at getting the Amboy UK leaf, pot, uh, leaf cutter setup as well, but that's if I get the Atters. I know what I said about the crazy 8 million, but I can't help myself. They've got super majors that can cut through human skin. And you know what I'm like, I'm always getting stung by a synopsis and invariably I have no fingers left after getting them. But they grow really quickly. The fungus is huge and they're huge. And I think it will be a really good addition to my ant cave. But what do you guys think? Should I get them or should I not? Please leave a comment and tell me what you think, if I should or shouldn't, because I'll tell you the truth, I'm, I'm really edging towards it. Going forward for this Conley, what am I going to do? I am going to get a third pod for them, as you well know, because I've discussed it in this video. And then I'm also going to get a fourth outworld, largest outworld, because I am going to have rope going from one of their uh, outworlds over to the feeding pod around the other side of the room, because I'm going to have it going around the room suspended by fishing line, because they can't climb fishing line, but they can climb rope. So that's the plan. If I pull it out of the bag and without them all escaping, that will be another question to ask later. But I don't need to worry about the humidity for the fungus because or the airflow because they've only got little tubes connecting it to the fungus and I'm not overly concerned by that. But yet again, you've got the ambient temperature of the room so the heat won't leak out if I, if I do decide to do this method. But to tell you the truth, I'm actually quite excited for it. So it's definitely something that's gonna happen in the future. As I draw to the end of this video, I have to put this picture up again. I think it's absolutely amazing. I don't know why, but I love this picture. I think it's absolutely awesome. I hope you guys do as well because I think it's brilliant. I love it. As always, guys, thanks for watching my videos. Please hit like and subscribe and leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, by all means, leave a comment and tell me why you didn't enjoy it because feedback is good. But I will say a big math thank you to you guys for watching my videos and also I owe my Patreons a big thank you as well. So please join me and give a big thank you to Adam W, Adrian, Antantix, Antimatter, David D, Jason W, Kevin R, Paul A, Pavance, PJ Grant and Wakushi. If you guys want to become a Patreon, by all means check the link in the description below. But that's it for today then guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye for now.